morning, and, and thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to uh, join us this morning. The uh, title of my talk is called The Great Seismic Migration Has Begun, uh, because that's what we're seeing across the board. Uh, we're seeing that seismic data is increasingly moving to the cloud, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the big picture and what we're seeing uh, in relation to, uh, that, uh, to that progression. Um, a little bit about our DNA at Explore. Uh, we really, uh, we've been around since 1981, uh, predominantly focused on acquiring seismic data in remote and challenging locations, challenging environments. Uh, we've been through that period, innovative and, and uh, creative and nimble. You have to be when you're working in these tough locations. Uh, we look for challenges and extraordinary uh, challenges and, and projects. Uh, achieving high levels of operational integrity, uh, our clients demand that. Uh, lately, we've really pivoted from working in those challenging frontier locations to pursuing technological frontiers and taking on technology challenges uh, in the last several years. Um, this is a, an example of that. What you're looking at here is a drone image of our field team in the, in the uh, Canadian oil sands acquiring what was at the time the highest trace density seismic uh, acquisition operation on Earth. Uh, since then, the guys at BP have beat us again. Uh, this one was 100 million traces per square kilometer. Uh, BP's now hit 187 million recently. Uh, but that is the direction that things are going. And, and they're doing this uh, moving through the forest, leaving the forest intact. Uh, so we're able to move through the forest, uh, deliver a seismic source without, without impacting the environment at all. Um, and so that kind of, I'll come back to that in a minute, but that kind of talks to the kind of change we're seeing in the industry. You've heard this morning uh, a few times about the general premise of the cloud being elasticity, speed, agility on demand, uh, varying your costs to meet your needs, and uh, the global reach of the cloud, um, being able to access that technology around, around the world, and then delivering variable expense uh, preferentially over CapEx. What does that mean for geoscientists? What does it mean for us in the oil and gas industry? It means that collaboration is coming in ways that we haven't seen previously. We just heard about that through OSDU and the collaborative approach that's coming. Uh, the idea of sharing data uh, and interacting with data globally uh, is coming our way. And then uh, all kinds of innovation uh, that will be built on the back of that, and that innovation will accelerate workflows in, in pretty dramatic ways. And we're seeing lots of examples uh, here, the Kaggle competition that TGS ran, uh, looking at machine learning solutions for uh, interpretation of salt bodies, uh, you know, people moving to various cloud domains, uh, the work that OsoKey, which is also an AWS partner, is doing to interpret, uh, uh, to provide interpretation solutions through AWS. So people are moving in this direction, and it's an, an era of ferment and um, innovation and, and pretty rapid change, which is exciting. The problem in the background for Seismic, and there's sort of two groups of problems here, uh, and I'll talk first about the legacy seismic data problem. Uh, what most of us in the room know is that most seismic data on Earth is pretty much in this condition, or maybe this condition, or maybe this condition. This is one of our clients. And so we can talk about cloud and machine learning, but you can't access this data if it's stuck in this condition. That's the problem. That's the challenge that we all have. So we have this vision of what's possible. And by the way, here's a seismic data migration I saw in Calgary. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my, my son took this picture from the passenger seat. I said, take a picture, take a picture. Uh, but this is not what we would advise if you're looking at migrating uh, data. Um, so what, what's the cost of the status quo? Cost of the status quo is enormous, right? We've got expensive storage. It costs a fortune to get at it. It costs a fortune to reproduce it. It's inaccessible. We can't use it. Uh, oftentimes, the existing uh, vendors will have uh, hostage-style contracts, charge you an arm and a leg to get your data out. And you've got data, all of this is delaying and, and acting as an obstacle to progress, making collaboration slow and impossible. It's why... Um, Philip just said, takes over half of a geoscientist's time to get to the, uh, to the data. Our vision for uh, value maximization, then, is that geoscientists get their data instantly. 
spend time working with your data, not looking for data. Uh, we've seen and delivered massive reductions in storage costs, uh, two orders of magnitude, sometimes three orders of magnitude cheaper. And I'll talk about some specifics there. And also, uh, the vision is direct programmatic access to the entire seismic data library. So getting directly to your data. Uh, and data that's validated, robust, and secure, that will drive medialist data transactions. Instead of asking for delivery of tape or delivery of a USB drive, we'll be taking digital rights and entitlements and uh, keeping the data where it is, working with the data where it is. And that will enable full utilization of machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and all, all these other buzzwords. We thought when we started in this business just over a year ago uh, that we would just start with liberating and migrating data and get people uh, to the maximization point. In fact, uh, we had to add an, a key element, which was data discovery, because we found that most of our clients didn't actually know where their data was, what condition it was in, how to get after it, and they also had, uh, in many cases, problematic contracts with existing legacy vendors that had to be worked through. So we've turned that data discovery process into a service and then offer the liberation and migration element uh, and, then, and then connect you to your, uh, to your various vendors for maximization. So that's kind of the journey to the cloud. Um, we've uh, moved today over a petabyte of data to the cloud. Uh, we moved our thousandth terabyte here just a few weeks ago. Uh, we use the AWS Snowball and the Snowball Edge. We found them to be by far the most reliable uh, transfer appliance. We've tested all of them. We actually posted videos of our different tests on, uh, on LinkedIn, if you'd like to see those. And, uh, and then we found some other issues along the way. Uh, we put up an observer's log challenge here because uh, to pull metadata on ingest, uh, there's a need for um, recognizing handwritten text, uh, something that is not easily done. We started with a $5,000 challenge. Uh, some people poked some fun at us online, said that wasn't no, anywhere near enough, so we boosted it to 20,000. Uh, maybe it needs to be higher than that, but perhaps an eager student can find a way to do that. Okay, uh, and, then, and then, so this is what it looks like. This is an actual screenshot from our uh, S3 uh, bucket uh, for one of our high density data sets. And just to put it in perspective, S3, full availability, hottest storage, 0.023. Uh, dollars per gigabyte per month. Uh, that's about $23 a terabyte per month. So it's pretty expensive, but way cheaper than we're used to. Uh, Glacier, which is the next la layer of, avail of availability, you're looking at uh, 0.4 cents. And for Glacier Deep Archive, which is where most of our field data will reside in the industry, uh, you're looking at under, a, under $1 per terabyte per month. So it's a that, that is often, if you look at, compare that to your legacy costs, it might be a thousand times cheaper. Deletion is free on the cloud. You don't have to pay for it. Be careful, though, because uh, you don't want to delete data that you, that you still need. Um, and we found as well that replicating data across different geographic regions is actually very easy and seamless. So uh, it works. We've done it, and, uh, and it works very, very well. OK, second consideration is the industry is changing anyway and progressing the seismic industry, that is, in, in another way. And that is, we identified these needs for improved subsurface images uh, that enable better business decisions and reduce environmental impact. This is a graph that uh, is a uh, derivative from a, from a BP graph, a uh, paper they produced, published in 2015, studying the uh, impact of high density acquisition on the reliability of data uh, and that has a particular application here in North America with unconventionals. And so most of our historical data is off the bottom of the BP scale, which makes it very, very difficult to do advanced attribute analysis of the type we need for unconventionals. It's why Seismic's been struggling uh, for some time. And so what we've been doing uh, at Explore is following in the footsteps of folks like uh, BP and ConocoPhillips and others, uh, driving to very high trace densities uh, uh, as you can kind of see on the scale, achieving that over uh, 41 million, almost 100 million uh, traces per square uh, uh, just over a year ago. Another BP paper that was published uh, this year, 2019, 
uh, shows this graph. Notice that the y-axis is a logarithmic scale. Uh, so, and it shows the progression of trace densities over the decades. So uh, you can see here, uh, the screenshot that I showed you earlier came from our 100 million traces per square survey that was actually on the BP graph. Um, and so legacy data sets for context are measured in gigabytes per, per square kilometer. That's what we're used to uh, with the existing data sets. Data sets that are being shot today are measured in terabytes per square kilometer. So, uh, for, for example, uh, the test we did here, just under one square kilometer, generated 148 terabytes of data. So, uh, two orders of magnitude, two or three orders of magnitude more data. And in future, uh, surveys are being planned today that are, and shot today that are petabyte scale. So, uh, multiple petabytes of data. And that change, it just means the way that we've been storing data won't work uh, anymore. It also means that uh, to process that data, we're going to need new processing and new IT infrastructure. The existing systems won't work as we drive to a billion traces per square. And the other thing we know is that uh, the primary uh, barrier to value uh, that we see post-acquisition is the seismic data processing timelines. The existing compute power is uh, not sufficient for this, uh, for this structure. So uh, AWS tools such as Elastic Computing and serverless infrastructures like Lambda and machine learning can, can accelerate that, and we can all see that. The other thing that we've been working on is taking data from the field directly to the cloud. Uh, so this is a, uh, a, an image here from a LinkedIn article we produced and, and published. And you can see the snowball resting on the counter in the field reaping trailer. So we're, reading, we're getting rid of any media here and reaping directly to cloud uh, out, of, out of the reaping trailer for a land uh, op acquisition operation. Uh, this accelerated workflows, reduced cost by uh, 98%, and it, and it works. We've, we've done it. So the, so the journey's a little shorter for new acquisition, right? What, what we should be looking to do as an industry now is uh, avoiding that first step of creating the media, figuring out where to store it, dealing with all of that. Uh, with the right approach, you can drive right to, uh, right to the end point with data value maximization. So the migration's underway. Uh, we can see that uh, there's all kinds of initiatives in that, in that uh, sphere. Uh, of course, not everybody's going to make it. Uh, but, uh, and there are some pitfalls along the way. But there's no doubt that it's happening. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time.